Before diving into the actual source code, I wanted to show you guys this one thing. Whenever you are in a lexical environment or a scope, in other words, in this example, we are inside the window object, or you can say, and this could be any scope, but in this particular example, we are in the scope of the window objects constructor. When you're in the functions scope, usually variables are divided between the variable environment and this binding. For example, here we created a new window object and the, this keyword will refer to the window variable name. When a constructor is executed, we are basically creating an execution context. An execution context contains these two places for naming variables and the, this binding. In ECMAScript 5, we have variable definitions that can look like this. You don't have to use the var keyword, but if you do, you're basically doing the same thing. And, and then this keyword will actually have properties we have just defined, and they will equal exactly the same values that we assigned here through this variable definitions. And naturally, because this is just a link to the window object, we'll have window.a and window.b equal the same values that we created here in this variable. But in ECMAScript 6, if you define a variable using the let keyword here, and you try to output it into this.c or window.c, you'll notice that they are undefined. So ECMAScript 6 draws a better separation between variable environment and this binding. And notice, the C here is not undefined because it was hoisted or anything else. It's simply this property doesn't even exist at this point. And so let keeps the variable definition to the variable environment and doesn't touch the this binding. As you can see, that is not so in ECMAScript 5. And we have code like this from 2009 when ECMAScript 5 came out. But generally when programming, you don't even concern yourself with things like these. But at the core level, this is the distinction between defining variables with var and let in two different specifications of JavaScript. My recommendation is to start using let and always define your variables on top of the scope. So remember, let is not hoisted and throughout the rest of this tutorial, we'll take a look at actual source code and see how that works. I wanted to start with saying how when you're in the global scope, you're really inside the window. And what I mean by that is that somewhere behind the veil, JavaScript defines the window object as something like this. Now, of course, this is not shown to us in the actual source code here, but roughly around the time when the URL is open in the browser, JavaScript does something like this. And so whenever we are in global scope, we are also inside the main window object here. For this reason, we have the this keyword and it actually equals window variable created here. So again, none of this will actually be seen in the actual application, but it's implied. So for this reason, whenever you create identifiers, uh, first we'll take a look at what happens when you create an identifier name without using the var, let, or const. And this works because it gets attached automatically to the this object. For example, if you start outputting it, not only it's available by its original identifier name, but it's also available as Windows dot and this dot, because remember this keyword in the global scope refers to the instance of the window object. This is why when you define identifier names without any of these keywords here, you can actually access them in these three different ways. So to demonstrate that, I'll refresh this in the console and you will see that we output it the value of this variable three times in a row using different access methods. Keep in mind that in ECMAScript 5, which came out in 2009, so for a long time in JavaScript, we only had these two ways of creating variables. So you could create one without using the var keyword and using the var keyword. So these two ways are, you can say, related to one another. So for example, if I place A here that was defined with the var keyword and go into the console, you will see that exactly the same behavior is observed. But as soon as we take something defined by let or const, let's do the let one first. And these two came out in ECMAScript 6. So if we place them here, you will see that only the first one gets outputted in the console, but window.b and this.b return undefined. Now that's only one difference between var and let. We'll take a look at some of the other ones in just a moment. But what happens here is that the this object in the global scope, it refers to the window object as we had seen earlier. And in each function scope, and this would be inside the constructor of the window object. In this object scope, this binding is different from variable assignment. So all of these variables are defined in the variable environment, because remember, we have a lexical environment for the global scope. But within that lexical environment, we also have this binding and variables. 
And then this binding is separate from variables. But because we have ECMAScript 5, the vars still assign to the this keyword. But let and const, they do not assign to the this binding. And so again, that's one of the first differences between let and var. But the major differences be between var and let definitions are not in the actual definitions themselves. They are in the differences of how variables created var and variables created let are used in the context of a lexical environment or a scope. Just to demonstrate that, let's put the let definition into its own scope and save this and see what happens in the console. You will see that when we reach this point in our program, the console will complain reference error B is not defined. That's because let is isolated to the scope in which it's defined. Let's try to do the same with var. As you can see, the error goes away because var is not constrained to the scope in which it was defined, only the let. Now the error went away because we're no longer trying to use let B outside of its scope. And so if you output it here, it's actually going to work. Now we have four of them this, this, and this. So really what happens here is var is actually hoisted up out of the scope into the global scope. And so what JavaScript does is it actually does something like this. Because variables defined with the var keyword are hoisted up into the global scope. But there's one little tricky thing. The value is never hoisted, only the definition, only the identifier name. So actually this should be uppercase A. So var A was hoisted up here and notice that the value was not actually taken here. JavaScript will automatically change it to undefined. And then as the code continues to run, we reach it here and it's actually defined here. And then it keeps going and we output A as one. And so the main difference here between var and let is that let does not hoist here. So there's no such thing as B undefined because that just doesn't happen with let. It's constrained to the scope. It does not really come out of it down into the program and it doesn't get hoisted up. So this thing right here doesn't even exist. And so the same exact thing applies to const. For example, if we conceal it here and try to output it into any of these and refresh the console, you will see that at first we'll get one which comes basically from let, but the const will actually generate C is not defined error. Again, because it's just like let, it's concealed to its own scope. So const obviously also are not hoisted, so they are constrained to their own scope. But the main thing about const is if you try to redefine it again, let's say to two, and let's take this away. So if we refresh the console, you will see type error assignment to constant variable. Basically, we cannot do that. Once the const or constant variable, that's what it is, it's constantly defined. Once you define it, you cannot change its value. In particular, in your code, const is useful for things like, let's say, for example, tax rate, because it doesn't change 33%, or any other variable speed of light, for example, and it's about 186,000 miles per second. If you try to change that value to something else, we'll see the console would generate an error. But in JavaScript, const is a bit tricky because it doesn't really define a constant value, but a constant reference to that value. So let me delete that so that this error goes away first. And so what I mean by that, if specifically when dealing with object, and let's say you create an object, and say a property one exists on this object. If you try to change the object itself, you're gonna generate an error. But if you try to change the property, there is no error generated because again, in JavaScript, const is not a constant value, but it's actually a constant reference to that value. So whereas you cannot change speed of light when it comes to objects, you'll be able to change its properties. So what then you cannot do is you cannot say something like this. You cannot redefine the object. It will give you an error. The object structure remains the same and only properties can be redefined as far as the value goes. And there it is, guys. That's basically how all of these different variable types are defined and work in JavaScript. And that brings this tutorial to an end. And I hope to see you in my next tutorial.